Hi English learners, welcome back. As you know, I am Laura from laurasenglishclass.com and today we have a little bit of a silly lesson where we are going to talk about five different expressions. Two of them are to indicate that you really don't want to do something and three of them are to indicate that you really want something. The thing that's connecting all of these expressions is that they're kind of from children's games. So these are expressions that you might encounter with native English speakers in a really informal context where people are kind of just playing around, relaxing with their friends. You're likely to hear these. All right, let's get started. First, we're going to talk about how to decide who is going to go and do a task that nobody else wants to do. This is kind of a way to indicate that you really don't want to do the task as well. So there's two ways to do it, and I'm going to show you some examples that I found off of the internet so that you can see that these are actually things that adults will do. Um, in the videos I'm going to show you, of course, these are in a more formal context, so it makes it kind of funny because it's really something that we only do in informal contexts. So for example, if you are going to order some takeout food, your friends are all sitting around watching a movie, feeling, oh, we're a little hungry, let's get some takeout, but they're not doing delivery. So this means one of you is going to have to go to the restaurant and pick up the food and bring it back for everybody. Ugh, nobody wants to do that. So you hear one of your friends say, the nose goes, and they touch their nose. Then you notice everybody else is quickly touching their nose. Why? Well, the last person to realize the game is being played, the last person to touch their nose, is the one who goes. So if you don't touch your nose fast enough, you're going to go pick up the food. So that's the first one. The nose goes. And you can see it here. Dear Jackson! Wow, they have hoagies and wings. Oh, they also have hamburgers. I think this place is trying to do too much. So that's the first one. The second one is very similar. It's again a very informal kind of childish game that you would do to decide who goes. You would say, not it, not it. Now notice, not it. You're going to turn that T into a T flap and you're going to link it together with the I so it sounds like na dit, not it. And oftentimes this gets combined together so you go, not it. If someone says not it, you have to say not it. The last person to say not it is it, and they will have to go pick up the food at the restaurant. So here I have an example from actually a commercial uh, that shows this, and of course it's a little funny because they're doing a childish game in a much more formal setting. So let's take a look. Where's the receptionist? I think she's out to lunch. I heard she's on vacation. Can somebody please answer the phone? Not it. Not it. Not it. So you can see in this clip that the boss needs someone to answer the phone because the receptionist, for whatever reason, is not there. And nobody wants to do it. So what do they do? Not it. And who out of these three has to answer the phone? It's that guy. That guy has to answer the phone because he was the slowest to go ahead and put his finger on his nose. Is it a very mature way to decide things? No, probably not. But you may see Americans doing this in a more relaxed setting. All right, so now let's talk about three different ways to show that you want something in this sort of playful, informal way. So the first one, let's go back to our example of that takeout food with your friends. Let's say that your friends are nice. You are the one who has to go, but your friends say, you know what, let's all go together. So one of your friends offers to drive and you think, you know, I want to sit in the front seat. Everybody else can sit in the back. I want to sit in the front. So as soon as you get outside, you see the car, you say, shotgun. Now, what does it have to do with a shotgun? Not really anything. But we say shotgun to kind of claim the front seat. If I say shotgun before anybody else, I have the right to go and sit in the front seat. So here's an example of that. Shotgun! Shotgun! I called it first, I got shotgun! No! So you're going to use the verb call with shotgun. So I call shotgun or hey, I called shotgun. Get out of the front seat. It's mine. So this is a way that you're kind of claiming that you really want the front seat. Everybody else, you sit in the back. I want the front. I called shotgun. 
Of course, this expression you can also use in a little bit more of a general way. You can also use this to just say that you want to do something first. You want to claim something as yours. So I recently saw a clip uh, from a TV show. It's a talk show. And they're talking about somebody who was upset because she chose a baby name but wasn't going to have a baby. She just thought, maybe if in the future I have a baby, I want this name. And the other person, the friend, chose the baby name that she wanted. And she wonders, is it okay if I get mad about that? And this is what they said. <laughs> you can't call shotgun on a baby name. <laughs> You can't call shotgun on a baby name. So call shotgun on something means that you're kind of claiming it for yourself. Nobody else can use it. I'm going to call shotgun on the front seat of the car. I'm going to call shotgun on that delicious chocolate cupcake that's right there. Maybe there's a tray of cupcakes and there's a whole bunch of flavors I don't like, but only one chocolate one. I call shotgun on that. However, that usage is a little bit less common. Usually when you say shotgun, it's specifically for the front seat of the car. Now, what else can you say to claim something? Our second expression for this is to call dibs on something. So you can either say, I call dibs on that chocolate cupcake, or you can just say, dibs on that chocolate cupcake, or you can point and say, dibs, dibs. So that's just claiming it, saying to everybody else, this is mine, this is mine. So, I call dibs, dibs. So you notice it's I call shotgun, I call dibs. Let's look at an example. What's that word? Dibs. <laughs> you can't call dibs on a girl I've been sitting here thinking about maybe talking to eventually at some point. <laughs> you never call dibs. So here you can see that they're fighting a little bit over who has the claim to go up and talk with this woman. So I call dibs. You can't call dibs, dibs. You can say all of those things to sort of claim, this is what I want. I want this, this is mine, okay? We have one more expression that actually, if you paid attention to the verb in the last two expressions, you'll sort of see makes sense. For example, I call shotgun or I call dibs. You can also just call something. So on that tray of cupcakes, I call the chocolate one means that I am claiming that chocolate one is mine, okay? So you can say, I called it. Hey, don't take that, I called it. I called the chocolate one. The chocolate one was supposed to be mine because I claimed it, I called it. Of course, with call, there's a million and a half other meanings if you say, I called it. It could be, I predicted it. It could be, I finalized the results. And it could be, in this case, I claimed it as mine. Now, this is a very informal usage, and very often you've got to give it a little bit of context, right? You're pointing at something and saying, I call the chocolate one. I call it. It's not, I call it. It's, it's mine. I call it. Great. So, today we have looked at five different expressions that are a little bit childish. They're kind of silly, but you can see that they actually are used with adults, and they're used sort of as cultural references in American English, probably also in British English. I've seen British people call shotgun before, for example. So you've got two ways to say that you really don't want to be the one that's chosen to do some sort of undesirable task. And you've got three ways to claim something that you really want. As usual, if you find this video helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, tell a friend, and of course, you can go over to laurasenglishclass.com and you can find some more English learning resources and sign up for an online lesson with me if you feel like you'd like to practice your speaking and take your English to the next level. All right, cool. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy and I will see you online very soon. Bye-bye.